time traveling once considered to be nothing but science fiction now a possibility this possibility has allowed many of us to dream and understand the future but also study the past as well now this all dates back into the 20th century with one brilliant physicist whose name is albert einstein and it's because of him his ideas his urge to unlock the truth of the universe he created something called the theory of relativity now the theory of relativity has two fundamental building blocks first one is known as the special theory of relativity while the second one is the general theory of relativity so in 1905 he introduced the special theory of relativity and the notion is basically that the laws of physics are the same for all observers regardless of the fact that the speeds may be either high or low relatively to each other so basically what einstein is trying to explain here is that speed is basically space and time they aren't just fixed entities rather interconnected and can change based on perspective confused yeah no worries but i need you to picture this imagine you flying out in space at speeds that is approaching this almost approaching the speed of light and this is where you notice an incredible phenomenon and we call this incredible phenomenon time dilation what is time dilation well basically time for you in that spacecraft will be slower compared to those back on earth so a few minutes or a few months in that plane could be centuries back on earth that itself is very intriguing and now this is basically a primary principle and the, and basically explains the possibility of how time traveling to the future itself is possible so einstein continued to research for 10 years and then he published the general theory of relativity in 1915 now this time he considers gravity as well and basically what he's trying to state here is that time passes more slowly in intense gravitational fields compared to weaker gravitational fields so basically what einstein is trying to state here is that large objects such as uh, such as planets and stars they are basically what, what we could say they are fabric they are basically fabric to be space time itself and that's where we perceive gravity so basically what we need to understand is that now since we are considering reality as well time continues to dilate that uh, if you if you are able to create area of large gravitational fields but here's where we start to question about time traveling as well and more specifically back now while we have all these theories there is still ongoing research and this is nothing but theoretical physics itself we have to basically research more on the practical well, the practical side of physics physics as well but there are two thought experiments that make us question time traveling itself the first one being the grandfather paradox now what do you think is the grandfather paradox here i once again need you to imagine something like this let's say you're going back in time and you meet your grandfather but your grandfather here hasn't still met your grandmother so you cause an event that leads to your grandfather not meeting your grandmother now if that doesn't happen your parents don't really exist right or should i say parent so if your parents don't exist how do you exist and if you don't exist how did you create the time travel machine in the first place that is where it gets to our head because we are trying to find the answer here and we are and we almost and most scientists see this as almost as a violation of the principle of of a uh, casualty as well and that is where we start to talk about the second paradox which is basically the bootstrap paradox now picture this let's say you have a few copies of shakespeare's books with you you hop back on to your time 
time, time travel machine, you go back and meet Shakespeare himself. But it's a time where Shakespeare himself has still haven't even gotten the idea to write any of these books yet. So he hasn't even thought of this in the first place. And you just hand him over the books to him. He takes the books, he publishes them, and then he gets world famous. But here's the mind-bending question. If Shakespeare didn't write this, who wrote it? We are questioning reality. If Shakespeare did not write this in the first place, how did it appear out of nowhere? Because we just gave him the books, he published them and got famous. But there has to be a creator here, right? That itself makes us doubt. And basically think about the capabilities and the limitations of time traveling itself. So as a result, time traveling for today's world is still a controversy. Well, Matthew talked about how time travel might actually be controversial, but he also actually proved that time travel is theoretically possible. I have a question. According to his paradoxes, we actually can't time travel, right? But even before going to that point, we have to understand that time travel has a major flaw. When you look at time travel, we can time travel in two ways. We can either time travel using a time machine, or we can time travel by basically beating the speed of light and traveling through a wormhole. Both of these methods would basically allow you to travel from one time period to another. But the question is, let's say you time traveled from Earth. Do you really think you're going to be landing once again on Earth in that other time period? Couldn't you just be put into a random location? There is no decisive location when it comes to time travel, right? And that's a big issue. Maybe I time travel from Earth and I end up in some planet. Maybe I end up on another planet. Or maybe I even end up in space itself. And what does that literally mean for me? I just die. Because there is literally no way I'm going to survive this. So basically, time travel is not possible if we cannot control the location we land on. And that is simply why I'm here today. I have a solution to this issue, and that solution is teleportation. Did I say that right? Teleportation? Doesn't that sound really absurd to you? It feels like I'm talking about something that is right out of a sci-fi movie. But let me tell you, teleportation, it is actually now real. Teleportation is simply based on one single phenomenon, and this phenomenon is known as quantum entanglement. Now, this word sounds pretty complicated, right? I can see lots of people here, they are wondering, what is quantum entanglement? Anything with the word quantum, we believe, is extremely complex, right? But I'm going to break it down in a way that is so simple that any one of you could actually understand what this is. Let's imagine this scenario. Let's say that you're in a fast food restaurant. You're going to order two items. You're going to order a burger and you're going to order a pizza. Now you're going to be receiving these two items in two identical boxes. So when you receive these two items into identical boxes, you could never know which box has which item, right? For all you know it, box one could maybe have a pizza, box two could have a burger. But you'd not really know what exactly it is. But now, let's say we open one box. And in the first box, we know that there's a burger. So now, we are 100% guaranteed to know that the second box has a... Exactly. The second box would definitely have a pizza. So what we can understand is that box one had an impact on box two, right? So technically, these two boxes are actually interconnected in a certain way. And this is basically what quantum entanglement is. The interconnection between two particles, even without contact. So now, 
if I'm going to explain this in terms of particles, right? I'm going to take two particles into consideration. We have particle A and we have particle B. Now, if you look at these two particles, you might think, hey, these are the same particles, right? Well, that's exactly what it is. Particle A and particle B are known as cosmic twins, which means that whatever happens to particle A must simultaneously happen to particle B as well. Now, before I move on to the actual teleportation part here, I'm just going to bring out to you a very simple theory. When it comes to particles, there's something known as the spin of a particle. A particle could either have an upspin or it could have a downspin. Well, anyone can understand that, right? So when we consider particles, when they have these type of spins, we can say that if one particle has an upspin, the other particles should definitely have a downspin. It's exactly like the scenario I talked about in the restaurant. If you know one thing, you know the other thing. So let's say that particle A has a upspin. Then particle B must definitely have a downspin as well. Now the crazy thing about this is, these particles could be in a totally different location. Particle A could be on the sun. Particle B could be on the moon. But regardless of how far away they are, they are still going to follow this principle. And that is why teleportation actually works. Now you might be wondering, okay, you talked about two particles, they're twins, all right. Where does teleportation come into the picture? Now I'm going to bring out a third particle. We have particle C. Now particle C is a bit of a lazy particle, just like my friend Matthew over here. Particle C wants to travel from A to B, but it does not want to physically move. It wants to teleport. How can it actually do this? Now when we look at particle C, we can see that particle C and particle A are actually interacting. When they're interacting, we can say that particle A and C are now entangled. That means that these two are connected. Retract a bit. Remember when I said that particle A and B are interconnected as well? What we do by connecting particle C to A is that we simply connect all three of these together. So now that all three are connected, if the twin, basically, twin A or particle A has a particle C in it, definitely particle B must also have particle C in it, right? So if that is the case, we can see that particle C has basically replicated itself, right? This is literally cloning. This is not teleportation. And that is where a crazy thing happens. When a particle like this is replicated in quantum entanglement, its original state disappears. So what has happened now? We can see that particle C was originally at particle A, but now it's at particle B. It has simply teleported from particle A to particle B. Now as crazy as this sounds, this concept is known as quantum teleportation. And this has been proven by scientists and done by scientists. And if, I'm, if I were to tell you, this has actually been done to, to particles, such as photons, over 400 miles. Meaning a particle has been teleported hundreds of miles away from its original location. So everyone, teleportation, it's very real. And quantum entanglement is why it is real. Now, I originally told you that this is basically going to assist us in time travel, right? So how does teleportation come into play? Where is teleportation's part in this entire thing? Well, we have to understand. As Matthew talked about Einstein's theories of time dilation, we can actually merge the theory of time dilation and the theory I talked about, quantum teleportation, to actually bring out a new theory. A new theory that can be the basis to form a device, a teleportation device that can be used to travel through time 
to a specific location. So what does this simply do? It basically eradicates the flow I talked about earlier. We are now not going to travel through random time periods to random locations. We can now actually control where we travel to. And that is essentially what allows us to time travel. But I have to tell you, this is still not practically proven. We have brought out multiple theories in this way, but in reality, time travel has not still been conducted. Neither has teleportation occurred with mass objects such as humans. And it might take a while for all of this to happen, right? We need much more advancements in technology to actually even be able to come close to these ever achievements. But we have actually achieved teleportation. We have actually found out time dilation as well. We have done something. We have figured out something. And that has been done by us humans. The whole purpose of us coming on stage today is to actually let you all know that these are all achievements that have been conducted by humans. We have been able to bridge the gap between science fiction and physics. And we have also been able to bring out a connection between two, two completely distinct topics, teleportation and time travel. And all of this was possible because of us. We did this. So understanding that, why do we have to stop with the theory? Why can we not try to practically prove this? As the future generation of not only this country, but this entire world, we have the ability to actually make this work. But in order to do this, we have to think hard. We have to brainstorm, we have to learn, and we have to try to figure out ways that have not even yet been found. But it is very possible. I would like to end my speech with a single quote. Theory can only take you so far. Thank you.